We have three major points that we're going to go over here on the Inscribed Angles and Circles lesson. The first point is we're going to talk about the definitions of a couple of terms. First we have the inscribed angle, which is an angle that has its vertex on the circle, so over here on one end, and whose sides form chords across the circle. In other words, it has a vertex that hits one side and then points or endpoints that are on two other locations on the circle. When you have an inscribed angle like this one, it defines an, ins an intercepted arc. So the two endpoints of the angle become the endpoints of an arc on the opposite side of the circle. The vertex of an inscribed angle can be anywhere on the circle as long as its two sides then form an intercepted arc somewhere on the circle and define some section of the circle as an arc that's opposite of that vertex. The second thing we're going to go over here is talking about some rules that work with those inter inscribed angles. If you have two inscribed angles, um, say A, C, B here, and let's do a different color, A, D, B right here. If you have two inscribed angles that have the same endpoints, A and B, for both of them, even though one goes down here to C and the other one goes, goes over here to D, these two angles are going to be identical because the arc or the measurement, uh, the degree measurement of the inscribed arc, or the inscribed angle, I'm sorry, is de uh, defined directly by the length of the arc on the opposite side. This angle right here will be exactly half of the portion of the circle that the arc on the opposite side of the circle describes. So if I have, let me draw a new circle here that we can use as a sort of a background, do one that's a little bigger, like so. And we'll do this. Yeah, that'll work. Um, if I have a circle like this and I draw a line from a given endpoint over here, a vertex, I draw a line over here and another one over here. If this angle right here is, say, 30 degrees, then this intercepted arc over here on the other side will be always twice that, or in this case, 60 degrees. And because that's always the case, if I were to draw another angle, say like this, that intercepted those same two endpoints, well, that same 60 degree measure is going to be effective for that arc, which means that this measure down here is still going to be the same 30 degree measure for the angle. Always the intercepted arc on the opposite side will be twice the measure of the angle on the inscribed angle inside. So that means too that for this other example over here we could go the other way. If we were to say, um, well I don't know, ABD, draw an angle here like so, ABD, and then ACB, these are going to be the same as well because those two both intercept this arc over here. So you can you can say this pi slice right here, ACD, is exactly the same as the one next to it over here because just like they did when we went the other direction, they both intercept this same arc right here, which is going to make them the same angle measurement. And then the third point, or the third thing we're going to go over, is I just wanted to point out for you on your lesson on the text in the uh, on the website there's a little interactive sort of a tool there about partway down through the uh, um, description I can't remember what it's called it's the term the guidance section that's right the guidance section on the website you may want to play a little bit with this little tool what this tool describes is the fact that if you have any angle any inscribed angle in a circle that uses the diameter of the circle as one of its lines then the diameter of the circle will always be the hypotenuse and any triangle you form with any point anywhere else on the circle will always end up being a right triangle and of course that right angle will always be opposite the diameter of the circle since the right right angle of a triangle is always opposite the hypotenuse but no matter where you draw a triangle if one side is the diameter then that will always be will always describe, I'm sorry, a right triangle, just like, I didn't mean to draw that line straight down, then we go over here, that will always describe a right triangle right here, 
and the diameter of the, of the uh, circle will always represent the hypotenuse of that triangle. It's kind of a neat trick. And you'll see as you play with that little tool, you just sort of grab a point like this one here, and you just sort of slide it around the outside of the circle like so. And you'll see that every triangle that you form with the, that little moving point and the other two, D and B, will always be a right triangle, even if you go on past and come on over to this side over here. You still end up forming a right triangle, kind of like this one that has a right angle opposite the diameter of the circle. So worth playing with, kind of gives you a good feel for how that, that last little rule works. And now we're going to see how that last little rule works with some of our example problems.